Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new Synology range of SSDs. More appropriately I want to talk about this one. This is the SNV3400. It's a 400 gig NVMe SSD for cash. Now we've talked about NVMEs and SSDs on this channel quite a few times but this is the first time we've had our hands on an official Synology SSD. That's right, you probably already heard they have made the jump into SSD in two very like um, separate tranches. We have got their SATA range, the SAT5200, which is enterprise grade SATA 2.5 inch SSDs, arriving I think in three or four different capacities, and those are designed pretty largely for their flash station series, although I'm sure they can be used for caching in the individual bays of most NAS. But they are designed for their flash station series, like the little 10 bay, the FS1018. Um, uh, then you've got some of the bigger ones, that FS6400, even the expansion unit that was announced recently, one of the first units in the 2021 series. But this is one of the two NVMe SSDs arriving in two different uh, lengths. This this one, which is a 2280 model, and the SMV3500, which is a 22110 length SSD. And even though they're, they're both different lengths, they've both got the same amount of storage. It's just that other generation SSD, the 3500, does arrive with PLP, power loss protection, and a few other little tweaks they're built in. But ultimately, that is designed for much, much higher end enterprise utilization, as well as in their own cards that we'll talk about later on. But this is the one that is designed for uh, caching across the majority of their systems. It can be used in those upgrade cards like the E10 um, E10 M20 and of course the M2D20 two cards that we talked about in the channel in the last week or so, as well as being utilised in the newer generation disk station devices that are arriving with NVMe SSD bays more and more. Of those four units that were announced recently, three of them featured NVMe SSD bays, and this is a trend that will no doubt continue into the 2021 series with the likes of upgraded rack mount devices, some of those new higher end um, enterprise models, and of course, that great little six bay that we're still waiting on, the DS1621XS. But, why should you buy this SSD? Why should you not buy this SSD? Is it a good SSD? And ultimately, is what Synology is doing right now a smart thing? These are the questions we're kind of hoping to answer in today's video. And this is part one of a six part series of videos where we are gonna be putting this drive through its paces. We're gonna be looking at it in a rack mount setting uh, against non-cache using uh, data center class drives. We're then gonna be comparing it against some of its contemporaries such as the uh, Samsung 970 Pro and the Seagate Ironwall 510 in caching comparisons. And of course, we will be seeing how this drive is accepted and the performance benefits it gives you in the newer generation 20 plus series devices. But I've used the word caching there Oh, about 50 times. <clears throat> Let's be honest, that's one of the key words about this range of SSDs that you're going to have to get on board with very early doors. These SSDs, the NVMe ones, are designed for caching. This is a drive that is designed to bolster and improve your standard hard drive storage array. So if you're using a RAID array that's got a bunch of hard drives inside, you know that you, although you're getting great capacity and an excellent price versus terabyte cost point, um, in terms of speed, hard drives, you do get performance benefits of between 70 and 120 megs per drive, uh, depending on the drive you use while you make the RAID bigger, and if you choose the right RAID configuration, but the IOPS are still gonna be pretty low, and ultimately, it's never going to reach the heights of SSD. On the other end, you've got SSDs, which are absorbently expensive. Don't get me wrong, they've come down substantially in the last 10 years since they properly landed, but there's still no avoiding that SSDs are still five to seven times more expensive typically than hard drives in NAS servers. So caching is how you leverage the advantages of one and bestow it on the other. You can use two or even four SSDs. You can get away with one, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, have two or four SSDs, depending on the supported system, and then utilize the high IOPS and incredible transmission speeds to help buffer and cache 
the storage of those hard drives. So frequently accessed files, um, file transactions where there's lots of small files being handled, this SSD can be used as a form of hybrid benefit to your hard drive storage array. Now, this isn't new. We talked about it here on the channel plenty. We've done plenty of speed tests. A week ago, we did our Synology comparison of using SATA versus NVMe SSDs to see if the system was able to garner the um, added benefit of super fast NVMe over SATA SSDs. It turned out it did. And I do recommend you check out that video or YouTube's already just told you to do it here on the side. But this range of SSDs is still a little bit in its infancy. The SATA ones arrived in a larger range of SSDs, but these ones have only arrived so far in 400 gig. That's 400 gig for both of the individual models. And 400 gig is a weird number, isn't it? And I will be talking about that later on in terms of construction. But with regard to this SSD, it's worth saying that it does arrive with pretty much all of the standard benefits of a lot of the SSDs that we've been recommending here on the channel for NAS. So, for example, this drive here from Synology, it's got a lot of their slick design. Let's go through the unboxing, shall we? Um, again, very small. It is a caching kind of enterprise class item, so external design isn't really going to be top of the order. But the drive, it's got lots of information about um, why you should choose a Synology SSD. There's a lot of information about support and warranty. It arrives with five years of manufacturer's warranty, which is what you would expect from a drive of this caliber. And it's also worth highlighting that five years of manufacturer's warranty is, you know, because this is designed for NAS, for caching, there is the odd caveat there in terms of that coverage. So first and foremost, these drives are designed to be used in Synology NAS. And if you use them in non-Synology NAS, you are going to be utilizing non-supported configurations. And that's something this warranty isn't covering. And therefore, Synology might not be able to provide you support you know, to an unsupported configuration. Same goes, that five-year warranty is from the moment you purchase it, but like any SSD brand, and you can look at the TNC of most warranties, that warranty is also coverage of its lifespan. So these drives are designed to survive for a certain period of time. It arrives with a great uh, data rights per day at 0 0.68. So you can fill this drive every single day to 0 0.68 of its capacity. So somewhere in the 2250s. Uh, on top of that, it also arrives with 500 terabytes written, which is quite impressive. But once again, something we are going to touch on during the course of this video is the idea that this drive leverages, I would say, a noticeable degree more in favor of read than write, which makes sense in a caching world. But it means that when a lot of people, myself included, are making comparisons between this drive and more balanced drives that try to go for a 50-50 split when they technically don't have to, there are some areas where this drive will look like it's come up wanting, but that's not always the reason because this is just for cash. Remember that, for cash. So it's leveraged what it's got where it matters within the Synology storage platform. So again, information there about the drive, the length of it, the capacity all around that box. It is a nightmare to open up one of these. So I've already done it here in the background on the other drive. And again, there should be some close up footage of this because this drive is just too small for me to just hold to camera. So hopefully throughout this video, you're gonna see some close up footage of this drive. But inside this is the box, you've got a plastic cover and then you've got the SSD itself. So let's take a little bit of it, uh, take a bit of a look at this drive. And again, hopefully there's some close-ups on screen. We've got the sort of label there on the top there. And underneath, we can see a lot more about the chips and processors are available on this. So lifting up that label, we've been able to take a very close look at this SSD and get some idea about what exactly is inside. For a start, it's that Physion controller. And again, quite a popular controller, the, the variant that it's using, the DC version. So it's a data center class controller inside there. And again, that same controller is available on both the 22110 model and the 2280 model here. And that means that it's still got support of that PLP service inside. But bear in mind that you're still going to have to have um, the controller either end there. And that's something you need the extra space for on that longer drive. Now, um, with that controller, it opens the door to end-to-end -to -end data protections. This checks at either end, it can do healing. On top of that, AES 256-bit encryption, which is always damn handy. And on top of the board, well, next to that controller, we've also got 
4 gig of DDR4 SD memory. So that memory, Hynix memory, is that's kind of helping things moving it along because there's two keen ways in which this drive manages to process very, very high and keyword consistent IOPS. And a lot of that is to do with a combination of that controller and memory, but also the actual NAND chips on board. Now, these are Toshiba NAND chips that are featured on this drive, and those are 64 layer. TLC NAND from Toshiba. Hopefully on screen at the top there, it has detailed a lot more information about the kind of NAND we're uh, that's being utilized here. And it's across four chips. So it's a 400 gig module with over provisioning taken into account. Now we've done a bit of research on those NAND and it looks like they're 125 gig each. They might be 120, 130. I apologize, but it's not detailed on the processors too well. But those NAND cells mean that each chip has got a good 25% give or take of additional storage that's being held back for over provisioning. Now over provisioning is kind of like an outside area around the capacity which allows better ca um, handling, caching and buffering on that SSD whilst it's running its operations, which again, running in, co uh, in conjunction with both the memory and that controller does mean great speed. So. Well over 3,000 megabytes per second read in terms of performance, thanks to the PCIe Gen 3 x 4, and that's uh, NVMe 1.3 on this drive. Um, on top of that, IOPS are well in excess of 200,000 in terms of read IOPS. But as mentioned, the write performance is where things differ ever so slightly. The write performance on this drive um, uh, is uh, around about 550 megabytes per second write, which I know a number of you are not going to be overly pleased about. That's more like SATA. And the write IOPS were 40,000 write IOPS. But once again, you have to bear in mind that it, when, when it comes to caching, it is a heavy read over write environment. The writing of cache is stuff that's done between other things. Like when you build and install a card for the very first time, that's a lot of the time where the writing takes place. But read is so much more important on caching. And you can see that some of you have leverage that against this drive to make sure that a lot of that comes through so again you've got that higher read for a reason because of its development in a nas environment and for its utility in a nas environment now it's also worth highlighting synology themselves have highlighted this to a high degree and we've not personally had a chance to go through it but we are hoping to see some of those results play out in our tests but they state that this drive has got a high sustained write, a high sustained read and write in its lifespan, which is very, very important because one of the downfalls of NAND that no one's ever really got over because of the architecture of this kind of media is that it has an endurance and a lifespan that's typically lower than hard drives based on how and when you access it. So the NAND eventually wears out. It's one of the reasons flash devices have dedicated timescales and RAID systems like F1 from Synology uh, allow you to have a tailored, tiered, replaceable storage RAID system under your control. Indeed, in DSM Storage Manager, there is a lot more information available for the analytical side and um, checks and health of these drives within storage manager uh, their own storage manager for their ssds for these drives than other brands used in their systems now the with you factor in the over provisioning the memory that great controller and pcie gen 3 times 4 uh, nvme uh, 1.3 you do have a drive that does have serious throughput available to you but once again in favor of write over i'm oh, sorry in favor of read over right to so just know that that's the drive you're going for there but of course this is a drive within the Synology NAS system that is designed for caching only now I've said that about design and I know I've been repetitious but it's worth highlighting that there is no Synology NAS right now rack mount desktop or PCI upgrade card that allows you officially to use NVMe SSDs for for raw storage you just can't and I know a number of you aren't overly keen on that. You like the idea of using uh, the speed that's available to you from NVMEs uh, within your storage array, particularly 10, 20, and 40 GBE systems, but these drives are only designed for caching, which I know a number of you may find a little bit annoying, but remember that heavy read over write architecture means that it's better for caching anyway, and that's exactly 
what the brand has gone for. So if we have a look there, and I'm sure it's been on camera already, you've got the big NAND chips there at the end, you've got that controller, you've got the DRAM, and on the other half side, you've got those other two NAND chips as well. Now, the architecture of this drive is still very, very good. You can tell Synology have definitely approached this with that slick, overthought nature of theirs. They have approached this kind of gone, right, we want a drive that can perform this much so we can say our systems can do this. Those that caught the DSM-7 overviews that we were talking about last year at their launch event and the year before, in fact, with DSM-7, there's a big, big push towards intelligent caching in the background with things like hybrid share being worked on as well as making your system appear localized even when it's not and making file access faster than ever so caching for them is a big big thing and the other reason being that it is featured in all of the 20 plus series units now these 20 plus series units all are arriving with those nvme bays all of which support their own ssds as you might expect. But bear in mind that you have to go for the 2280 SSDs inside these devices, as the other ones are just built for cards like these currently, or maybe newer generation Synologies just around the corner. Now, with these cards, one thing I have already touched on in my hardware unboxing is about compatibility. Now, this video is still about these SSDs, that's very, very important. But for those of you that have looked up about these cards, you'll know that the M2D20 and the E10M20 arrive on the compatibility list only supporting Synology NVMEs. Now, we have installed the Seagate Ironwolf 510, we've installed those Samsung drives, we've even got some WD Blacks coming, and seemingly they have worked. But there's no guarantee that you're going to get the same performance that Synology are saying that these can in their storage systems than you will. Um, there's no guarantee that you'll get that performance from those other drives. And that's something where our other comparison videos later on are going to be very, very important about. Because this is a brilliant card. Now, I'm looking forward to running my tests on an SA3400 just out of shot. Unfortunately, too close for comfort, so it's not on um, in a video very, very soon. But that idea that Synology are now saying these cards, are they only highlight on that compatibility list, their own SSDs, is something one would worry is going to be extended onto their desktop platform. Because at the moment, there are lots of NVMEs listed on their disk station devices. If you go down, there's a Seagate, there's some WDs, there's something like that. Because people have been installing these. Let's face it, the 920, not so much the 920, but the 72420, 918, uh, 1019 these are NAS drives that have arrived on the scene before these SSDs existed so those compatibility lists are a great deal fuller but um, I would be concerned if Synology started moving away from that third-party brand memory uh, um, third-party brand SSDs in the same way they did with memory to make it abundantly clear that for the stability of their systems and to make sure that their systems do exactly what they promise to the very highest degree that they say that you can only utilize their drives, or at the very least, highlight that if you use unsupported drives, that you may be using an unsupported configuration, which is very key. But I am looking forward to running our performance benchmarks on these SSDs. We're not going to be running intense single drive um, benchmarks. That is important. And again, there's websites out, Storage Review, did an incredible review um, of these drives and doing a performance benchmark on these. But there's still no avoiding that these are devised for caching. So we have to use them within caching. And this is what we're going to be doing, utilizing several Synology NASs, as well as perhaps testing them in other environments, but not in any real meaningful way. So pros and cons of these drives. First, on the pro side, they are NAS optimized. You're going to be very hard push to find a drive that is more optimized for NAS than this. You're going to have to look at data center class, some of the Intel DCs, and very few of the other NAS brand, uh, sorry, um, SSD brands out there in a commercial grade SSD arena are producing solutions that are so heavily influenced on the side of caching. Two, they are uh, they have incredible high IOPS and um, high write, uh, read speed, I should say, of well over 3,000 megabytes per second. Something that when you've got large areas of caching enabled and something I'm hoping is going to play out with the Ultrastar system in the corner, that those NAND chips are going to pave the way to something good. Also, 
Once again, I talk about them being NAS optimized. Another pro, we've got to talk about the fact that these SSDs are being built parallel to the systems they're going to be used in. This isn't a third party company building an SSD to another company over here building the NAS. This is two things being developed together and that will affect and improve the development of both of them side by side. And of course, there's that 500 terabytes written and 0.68 data writes per day, which is still pretty damn good for their first entry into the world of SSDs. What are the negatives? Well, first and foremost, it is the idea they can only be utilized for caching. Now, that's more about the systems than it is about the drive, but it still is worth highlighting for those of you that are seeing a Synology drive and going, woo, I'm gonna use that fast speed for my system. You can't, it's cache only. Secondly, the um, price versus capacity isn't fantastic right now i mean in terms of 400 gig there are other drives out there at the 500 gig mark that are using um tlc 64 layer nand and although they're not using this controller they have a better price point overall and that might affect a number of you less at the enterprise end i've got to say the enterprise end when you're buying these products you're buying a solution that does what it says but at the disk station end, that might become problematic to justify the price of these. And lastly, that capacity of 400 gig. I know this is a new release, and therefore the range isn't fully fleshed out as a portfolio, but starting with the 400 gig model to me seems a very odd choice, given that the SATA ones arrive in several configurations, all the way up to, I believe, almost two terabytes, and they've already got quite high grade um builds around them for flash station they've got the uh, one 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 point zero data rights per day as well and a comparative terabytes written across that series of 2.5 inch drives for their flash station series but only releasing a 400 gig model on its own it seems a bit of an odd choice across both of those capacities given that generally in a caching environment you want maybe 10 to 20 percent of your hard drive storage array um, after RAID, available as cash, 400 gig does seem like a very small number. And possibly this is a bottleneck that I'm going to be hitting um, without really being able to avoid it with my Ultrastar series because I'm going to be using Ultrastar 10 TBs. So a number of you might be using very big drives and find 400 gig NVMEs just a little bit limiting. So I am looking forward to seeing this range expand further if indeed it is a success, which I think it will be because it's long overdue. If any brand was going to do this, it was always going to be Synology. But this has been my hardware review of the SNV 3400-400G. Bear in mind, there will be performance tests on this drive in the next day or so, and these are going to continue over a period of time. I would include them in this, but this video has got to be at least 20 minutes by now. And let's face it, you just want to know, I just wanted to discuss these drives before we really got down and dirty into the caching of them. Thank you so much for watching. Do visit the link in the description to NAS Compares. It's, a, it's the hardware written review. And on top of that, we'll be adding the software review to that page along with all the videos embedded inside it. So although this video is a product of its time and it's been recorded, that article is going to be updated frequently. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. And of course, do visit the guys at span.com and as experts for looking for your perfect data storage solution. Over 25 years in the biz, they know exactly what they're doing. I wouldn't talk about them if it wasn't legit. And of course, visit links and as compares. I will see you next time.